Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video I'm going to bring you a guide about Dwalin. One of the best T1 commanders on God's side, maybe even THE best T1 commander. I'm not quite sure because I still have yet to see reports of the Respect Tan item of Faramir and then compare Faramir with Dwalin. Both seem to be very viable and Faramir and Dwalin are fighting over place 1 as T1 top commander. Let's get going with the general overview. Dwalin is a warrior commander, which means once he hits level 20, he gets plus 25 might, like commander might, and then plus two skill points, as well as his physical damage gets a boost of 10%, like physical damage boost. Looking at the stats, we can clearly see that his might stat is the highest one, and this is the main attribute which you would like to push. The other stats aren't that important, like his focus stat, not that important. And the speed stat, in my opinion, isn't that important as well. As long as he hits and his hits land, you don't have to worry about anything else. And he's going to hit. He's going to hit hard with his respect three skills. This is the gear I'm wearing with him right now. And I think I'm doing okay with it so far. Now let's check out Rollin's skills and see why he is maybe even the number one T1 commander in the game. So, starting with us Respect Zero title here, Musician. This alone isn't that great, but what I do think is great is Level Headed, since this has a cleanse mechanic built into it. So, this alone is already amazing and can counter many strong commanders such as the Undying, like, or the Witch King's Respect 5 title where he debuffs your units and you deal less damage, like the 20% less damage for your troops. With this, you can just cleanse that. That was just one example. But yeah, cleanse. Then he has some healing mechanics as well. This is nice to have whenever we have the special event Hearts of a Hero, if you want to farm dragons, balrogs, spiders and so on. Like this will help you keep your troops healthy so your economy doesn't suffer while you're doing Heart of a Hero. Experience Warrior, boosting the normal attacks of Dwalin. And Dwalin has very strong normal attacks. This is one of his strengths in my opinion. Hunt down, this is a nice debuff on the enemy army. So what this does is that uh, you get a certain damage increase, like um, whenever you hit an enemy, your next hit on the same target will be boosted by a certain percentage. And that certain percentage is also scaling with might. So once you hit an enemy with this, your troops are going to deal a lot more damage with this. And you should make sure that you apply this skill before any other damaging skills because we want to land this first so anything else it's even harder and this is part of the skill order which i will show you later collaboration this is just giving some extra physical damage to your normal attacks that's a given like uh, there's no further explanation needed for this at respect 3 we have Durin's Blood which is increasing the skill damage of Dwalin by 35% when you have maxed it out and it is also giving you plus 15 might which is a lot. So this title alone is making Dwalin a commander who is dealing high commander damage. If you pair this with Whirlwind and All In which in my opinion is mandatory and you should definitely do it you are already good to go like you are already competitive enough with this respect three title but let's move on with whirlwind so whirlwind is a skill which activates every three rounds it is striking two enemy targets if there's only one target you will hit the same unit twice like on the first go bomb you hit him once and then if there's no other target left you do another hit on the same target many people didn't know this but this is how whirlwind works and it also prioritizes melee units. All in, now this takes effect every four rounds, but as the name states, you are going really all in. This is your highest damage dealing skill, like you deal at max level 750% physical damage. And then whenever you do an attack afterwards, that attack gets reduced by 50%. So it is important to have this as our last ability going off since we don't want, let's say, Whirlwind coming after all in. That would be just 50% waste of damage. Then at Respect 5, we have Warrior of the Lonely Mountain. This skill is so good that this alone is making Dwalin a hardcore Witch King counter. Pick 
Warrior of the Lonely Mountain and max this out. And also, this is giving you physical damage received mitigation by 15%. That too is amazing. I think Dwarlin is because of this skill set, like anything here you see, anything makes sense. And in my opinion, Dwarlin is already very competitive once he reaches his Respect 3 title. And if he reaches Respect 5, he gets even better. But yeah, now let's move over to the skill order. So what I like to do is this. I put a few points into Experience Warrior. One point into Hunt Down, one point into Collaboration, then some points into Durance Blood, one point into Whirlwind, one point into All In. And this is already a good skill order because now we have ensured that the first thing that hits the enemy is Hunt Down and thus the next damage the enemy receives is getting increased. And not just from one source, but from all sources. And this effect is scaling with might, as well as it stacks two times. All right, whatever comes after will deal more damage. This is why we have selected collaboration afterwards and whirlwind. Last but not least, all in, since this needs to be our last skill damage going in, because everything what comes afterwards is getting mitigated by 50% damage. We don't want to lose that big chunk of a damage. Then, if you are fighting against evil side, it would make sense to maximize Warrior of Lonely Mountain. But if you aren't fighting evil side, it would make sense to distribute everything between your Respect 3 title here and the skills to it, as well as the upper Respect 03. But what I always like to do is put two points into Musician, and one point into level headed, just to have the cleansing mechanic going on. This is good against evil side as well as good side. So this is something you should definitely always have. And the rest is just like I explained. If you're fighting good side, spend all your points into these skills over here and here. If you're fighting evil side, you would be doing something like this. Maxing out Warrior of Lonely Mountain. And then we are good to go to max out Durance Blood. We max out Whirlwind, all in, and then I would be distributing all of my skills into Experienced Warrior and Hunt Down, as well as Collaboration. Like I would be going back and forth between these skills. Two points here, one point here, one point there, and so on. You get the idea. Right now I have enough points to spend two more points into Experienced Warrior, but I think that's a pity since I can't follow up with putting one point into hunt down and collaboration since I lack skill points, which is why at this point I like to do this, just put two points into Longbeard to ignore some defensive stats, which then again will let me deal more damage. And there you go, this is how I am skilling my Dwalin. All right, now let me explain what strength Dwalin brings to the table. His first one being he has high commanded damage. His second one would be he has fire resistance, which is exceptionally good against evil side. His third strength would be that he is boosting his army, be it by this debuff like Hunt Down, so they deal more damage, or by giving them better survivability with this cleansing mechanic over here. All right, now let's also establish his weaknesses. I think he has three weaknesses. The first one being that he is also vulnerable against high command damage, like many commanders are. His second weakness would be that he is also weak against Commander CC. Imagine your commander falling victim to madness, like if Grima or Sauron is making him mad. That would mean that he is using all of his abilities here, and especially these abilities, to burst damage your own troops, which is why madness is a weakness. Or also commander stun but commander stun is a given every commander is weak against that his last weakness is that he's kind of weak against focus and poison damage since he has nothing in his kit that is covering that which is why he needs to rely on his items to cover those weaknesses which he can totally do by the way like the quilted armor with focus protection or there is another chest piece that can give poison protection all right now here we are back again at the itemization let's start with the purple gear so I, I will make this quick, like Battle Axe by far is the best purple weapon he can equip. He's even ignoring some defensive stats with the special effect Flay. Then 
it's really coming down against what you are fighting, but if you are fighting against evil sides, superior hallback with fire protection, that is mandatory. If you're fighting good side, the quilted armor will do the job with focus protection. Now as a helmet, I have decided to go with the full helm since this adds a special effect blinding barrier. And this gives you even more elemental damage coverage for your knights. Knights are a T2 unit, but that doesn't mean they aren't viable. I do think that in combination with this special effect, knights are very nice to have since Dualin relies on a single stack in his army anyway. He doesn't need anything else. He wants to stay, for example, immune against troop madness. He ensures that by having a mono stack of a unit in his army. And this helm is great to cover even more elemental damage. As a second option, I have listed the Bone Mask just because overall good stats and also the special effect Manipulate is mitigating every two rounds damage. You might also go with Hysteria if you want to be more aggressive. As an accessory, I have decided to go with the Flame. Yet again, all the good stats he can use and also some self-sustain for a single stack of tanky units. This will work just fine. It was a bit complicated to look into his golden gear because now we have a few options over here. To the right, I have decided to go with an eagle build. I do think that Dwalin is exceptionally good with eagles when he equips the gigantic hammer with Frenzy. Remember, whenever this guy hits, he has his respect zero title with the skill Hunt Down. Hunt Down is the skill that increases the next damage the enemy target receives. So. By having Frenzy, we don't just only deal damage with this effect over here, but we also have a chance to trigger Hunt Down. Then we have to ensure that our Eagles getting a lot of might as well as some defensive stats, and they also have elemental damage coverage since we have Warrior of Lonely Mountain with the 50% burn damage mitigated. And then as a helmet option, I have decided to go with the Cask of the Submerged Isle. It has Commander Madness Immunity over here, this will be very nice to have against Saurons as well as Grimars. And nowadays you encounter these a lot. Because we are right now, I am in Season 5 and people have wailed out their commanders. This helmet will come in handy. As his accessory, I have decided to go with the Box of Knowledge. Since once you have maxed this out, you get a 60% chance to trigger both of these effects like you can deal an additional physical damage of plus 9% and also you can trigger that you ignore the defensive stats of the target by 30%. And these two points by the way, they trigger separately from each other. That means you have a 60% chance to trigger the first effect and another 60% chance to trigger the next effect. And if you have maxed this out, I think you will get a big return of investment. So right now I have explained to you that I would be using the items on the right side in my eagle build, like a single stack of eagle build. On the left side, I would use Dwalin whenever I'm using dwarves. I could be running a single stack of guardians or a single stack of iron warriors. That would make sense. In that case, I would equip the Axe of khazad with Cleave. Good stats overall. The same goes for Durance Blade, it boosts Dwarves as well as Might, Tactical Maneuvers just to ensure that our tanky units stay even longer alive, and then the Iron Bassinet with a stun immunity just to ensure that in every round we can also get some damage value out of our Guardians, for example. And there you go. This, in my opinion, is the most viable gear for him. If I have missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. What are your ideas? What would you be doing with your Dwalin? Does it make sense to give Dwalin his respect 10 item? In my opinion, I wouldn't go with this just because, like, all right, it has good stats. It has attack dwarfs plus one. That's all nice to have. But what I don't like is a special effect called Battle Dance. It has a chance of only 20% to trigger, which means this might trigger once or twice in a battle. So this alone is where I say no thanks. I think we would be much better with the options I have shown you before. Like 50% chance triggering Cleave is much more reliable than his respect 10 item. Or even the gigantic hammer which has even more plus attack. So these two items I think surpass his respect 10 item. Don't fall for that trap guys. Here we are at the troop composition now. I've already explained a lot about his army composition, but let me also show you what I mean. 
So whenever you have the helmet with blinding light, which is giving your knights elemental damage coverage, you are going to have knights only in your army. Right now, I don't have any of them left, but just imagine you would be putting only knights and completely max out your knights and you are good to go. Another option would be if you don't have the blinding barrier as a special effect, if you are running a more dwarf heavy comp, just go with guardians and just max this out and you're good to go. Or if you are on Erebor and you have their T4 units like the Iron Warriors, put Iron Warriors in, max them out and you are good to go. What you also could do is maybe put even some Ram Riders into his uh, army composition and uh, bring them to 50% and then also have another tanky unit to 50% filled. And there you go. These two guys will tank for you while the Ram Riders will apply uh, an effect like this trample which will reduce the defenses of the enemy target by 50% which means your Dwalin and the rest of your army are, go are going to deal more damage. And this is how Dwalin can get maximum value out of his troops. Alright, let's jump over to the reports part and let me show you what results I have achieved. So right now I am running my Dwalin in his uh, against evil side build. This is the gear I have equipped with him. Cask of the Submerge, I, right now it has Aegis, unfortunately I don't have the effect which gives Commander Madness immunity. But yeah, it's working out okay. And I should also mention that I am in Season 5, which means my troops have all some additional special effects. Like my Guards of the Tower have the special effect Shield Training. That means that the Guards of the Tower, they themselves, receive plus 20% increased damage, but any other unit in my army gets 20% less damage received. And now here is a little trick which I'm going to show you. The same special effect, like here, shield training, can be used by your guardians. They too have this. And these effects stack. So these guys are covering each other. And they have nullified this effect. And now I have put some Ram Riders into my team composition and these guys are my main tanks. Why ha have I decided to do that? Because they give all the nice special effects like defense redu reduction by 50% as well as by nature they are already 20% resistant to fire damage. This is very good against evil side like when you are countering Witch Kings but also these guys get tankier the longer the fight lasts with Divide and Conquer. This can stack 5 times and whenever it stacks you get minus 6% damage mitigation. This is amazing. And they already have the damage mitigation of the Guardians, which is giving 20% damage mitigation, as well as the Guards of the Towers give additional 20%. So they have... These Ram Riders from the get-go have already 40% damage mitigation and they get even more with Divide and Conquer as the game goes on. So this is a special comp because of Season 5. I think this is the best comp we can have. Maybe it makes even sense to replace the Ram Riders with uh, let's say Cataphracts. I'm not sure about that but look at this. Burn damage received minus 20% as well as Defenses reduced by minus 50%. This is why I have decided to go, to go with Ram Riders. And this is the result we are achieving. We are fighting against the Khaldun. As many of you know, Khaldun by now is considered an S tier commander. He is just as good as Dwalin on good side. And this guy has amazingly good gear, gigantic hammer, superior hauberk, brutal helmet. Everything is giving damage mitigation for his units. As well as Drums of Moria with Bane of Dwarfs, like this is making our Ram Riders eat more damage. And also this is this is a high respect level Khaldun. Now here I have a report against Kestaro. I think I could have done a much better job if I had equipped the uh, quilted armor with focus protection, which I unfortunately didn't. This guy is dealing lots of focus damage, which is why this result is being shown here. His Oathbreakers are dealing focus damage and are being protected by the vanguards over here and then Kestaro himself is dealing bursty focus damage lord of the west focus damage here Vogel focus damage here and dreadful presence dealing focus damage as well as gear is aimed towards streamlining focus damage yeah cool gear 
I like it. If you have a report against the tough lords, like this is uh, amazing. Like lords is a T2 commander, but we can as a T1 commander hold our own ground. And look at this. We have only one stack of Ram Riders while he has two Art 2 recruit units in his team. Lords has amazing gear. Reckoning with Fury. I think that is best item for him. Melee Vigor. Berserker's Gaze. And of course, Drums of Moria. He could have even dealt more damage if he had the Bane of Dwarf special effect over here. But yeah, this is a high respect level Lords. Here we are fighting a Sauron and I was lucky that I somehow didn't kill myself because of the Commander Madness. But in an ideal world that wouldn't happen anyway because I would be equipping the Cask of the Submerged Isle with Commander Madness immunity. So this is right now the result I could achieve right now. The fire damage of the Corsairs are mitigated by Dwellin's Respect 5 title, that's cool. And yeah, this Sauron has good gear. Check out this gear, Carver with Smite, that is Biss. Section of Numeral. Very nice to have. Fortitude of Evil Man, even more mitigation. Worn out Smoking Pipe with Sustain, of course. Alright, this is a good Sauron. Now, here we have another Dwellin, and this time it is my body landed in. We are in the same fellowship. And by the way, Landedin, thank you for sharing a report with me. I really appreciate that I can show what Dwalin can do against the Witch King. So let's first check out his gear. My body has even better gear than me. Like Hammer of Moria, maximum strengthened. Everything is maximum strengthened here. It just needs more refinement. But let's not complain. This is nice to have. Resolve of Dwarves and also the best in slot accessory for any commander that deals damage by himself, like Gimli, Dine, Legolas. I think they all drool over this item. And I would like to get this too, but it is so hard to come by. But guys, when you get this box of knowledge with the special effect Warrior, do not get rid of it. This is so rare and so good. The return of investment, once you have refined this enough, will be so huge. But yeah, let's go back to the analysis. Witch King getting destroyed. And also the gear of the Witch King is also nice. Good gear. Good special effects. And yeah, he also has the right talent selected over here. Here is a fight against the Shadow. And as you see, Landodon is doing a great job. This time we are replacing the Ram Riders with Guardians. Since uh, it is kind of hard to keep up the production with these ram riders they are hard to produce but you can always make do with your other tanky units like your infantry guardians infantry is much easier to produce than your mounted units and this is the result the shadow also okayish gear it could be better but still look at this result he gets totally devastated here is a report against saruman I'm not quite sure if Saruman needs to be played in a retaliate build or if there is another more viable option. But I think that Saruman needs to be played in a retaliate build. So not quite sure what I'm supposed to think about uh, Saruman running uh, multiple units in his army. Here we have a fight against Grima and this Grima is very tough. Like definitely a strong Grima player. Let's look at his gear. A cutlass with melee might, awesome, scale mail, melee vigor, bone mask, hysteria, why not, worn out smoking pipe with sustain, high respect level Grima. This guy is dealing lots of damage against us because he is making our commander go mad. But still we are holding our ground and this is the result. Alright, let this be my last report which I share with you. Now why am I sharing this? Because here I was thinking about something special. Like we have the guards of the tower with uh, shield training so they mitigate damage for the other units. The same goes for the guardians again. But this time I have used Oathbreakers. I wanted to see how Oathbreakers can deal damage when they get support by these tanky units. And even if they die you still get to keep this effect for the rest of the fight. Which I should have mentioned <laughs> when I first explained the special effect. But yeah, so I ensure that my Oathbreakers are tanky as possible and they already mitigate 90% physical damage. So I just need to ensure that I cover elemental damage, which I also have done here. 
I have used his Respect 5 title, maxed it out, so I am safe against burn damage by 50%, and also against focus damage since I have the Quilted Armor. And this is the result. I am kind of disappointed, to be fair. Like, I thought we could have done more damage over here. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.